Despite this being primarily a retro gaming channel, I played a lot of new games in 2023 as well. Yes, I know, I'm full of surprises. And if you're interested, I'd like to share my 2023 favorites with you. Before we get started, I should mention that I do not work for any outlet or company, so I've got my own rules for how I do these lists, and those rules can change from year to year. I'm my own boss, I do what I want. And while I play a lot of games, I don't play every game. It's impossible. No one sends me codes, and there's only so much time in the day. So if your favorite isn't mentioned over the course of this video, it's because I didn't have the time or money to play it. Either that or the genre just isn't my thing. I've got three honorable mentions this year, games that for one reason or another aren't in my top five. Again, my rules here are non-standard, so just go with this. First up is The Making of Karataka, a museum piece from the makers of Atari 50 covering the creation of the 80s computer hit Karataka and the early career of its creator, Jordan Mechner. I really love the work that's being put into these releases, historical documents, interviews, early beta versions, remakes. It's the most comprehensive collection of materials for a single video game that I have ever seen. Now it's puzzling that no one involved with the production of the release seems to have asked Mechner a direct question during the whole thing, but other than that curious nitpick, it's a terrific package and an important historical collection. It's not something you're going to engage with over and over again over time, but even just once through the entire thing is well worth the entry fee. Next on my honorable mentions list is Star Trek Resurgence, the Telltale-esque Star Trek adventure game, which focuses on things that Star Trek is actually about instead of just ship-to-ship -ship combat. This is exactly the kind of Star Trek game I'm looking for, being able to exist in that world and impose my will on that universe. And for the most part, I'm happy with all the choices the game forces you to make. Only one scenario didn't give me an option that I would have chosen. It's a scene where you have to do the whole mutiny against your captain because they're being super weird about things thing. My only other real complaint against the game is the music, which sounds cheap and isn't at all Star Trek-y, unfortunately. I hate that Star Trek rights are all over the place and that the license doesn't grant you access to all the things. But anyway, if you're a Trek fan and you want to do more than just fly around and shoot other ships in 30-minute space battles, check this one out. My final honorable mention this year is Control. Control did not come out in 2023, I hear you. However, it was the best game I played all year, and it wasn't even close. Great locations, an amazing sense of style, really imaginative weapons, one of the most compelling narratives I've engaged with in quite some time. It's an all-time classic. I'm glad I finally forced myself to play it while prepping for Alan Wake 2. If you've never played Control, go get yourself a copy of the Ultimate Edition and enjoy a great video game. Let's get into the top five now, and number five on my list this year is Stray. Now, I know what you're thinking, Stray didn't come out in 2023 either. You're mostly right. However, it was released for other systems besides the PlayStation in 2023, and because this is my list, my rules, it counts. I played this the week it released this year. New 2023 game. Deal with it. Stray is a lovely, melancholy game where you play as a cat in an underground world where all the people are gone, and the only life that remains are the robots that people constructed over the years, some of whom are stuck in their original programming, unable to adapt to the changes in the world. Others have adapted, however, and you're tasked with helping them uncover what's happened and also return to the surface. It's delightful and sad and tragic, but joyful all at the same time. And you get to do all the dumb things cats do, so there's that. It's a very nice video game, and I don't even like cats. A allergies. At the number four spot is Robocop Rogue City. You've probably heard by now that this game is surprisingly good, and I can confirm that. It's the best Robocop game since the arcade original, and one of the best licensed games in years. As a fan of licensed games, I feel validated. Taking place soon after the end of Robocop 2, Nuke is still a problem in town, OCP are still assholes, and the brother of Paul McCrane's character from the original movie has arrived to seek revenge for his brother's death at Robocop's hands. I point out this last part specifically because the game is terrible at making that connection obvious, only using the character's name as a reference. And I'll be honest, I've seen Robocop a dozen times and couldn't tell you that character's name if my life depended on it. Maybe they couldn't get the rights to the actor's likeness to make that clear for the audience, I don't know. 
But one of the game's best aspects is all the other likenesses they were able to secure, making this feel very much like an in-universe sequel and not just some random video game adaptation. Most importantly, Peter Weller has reprised his role, obviously after falling back in love with the character after that KFC ad campaign. He's totally on board with every dumb thing they're making Robocop say, and there are some very goofy bits of business all throughout the game. It's not just a straightforward shooty murder fest, but you do detective work, get greeting cards signed, solve celebrity problems, get dry towels for cops, and repeatedly communicate with a police informant named Pickles. Gherkin, was it? Pickles. You might be ignoring Robocop Rogue City because you've been taught that all licensed games stink. This is legit great though, so stop ignoring it. They've even got the rights to the proper Robocop music, so suck it Robocop 2 composer. Dead Space is number 3 on my list. Yes, it's a remake. It's a remake of a great game, and it's still great. The atmosphere, the way the game sounds, the tools at your disposal, it's so well designed from top to bottom, and this remake is now the best way to play it. That's all I'm gonna say, it's top tier sci-fi slash horror gaming. It's a shame what happened to the franchise along the way, and so I hope this remake did well enough to right that ship. My second favorite game this past year didn't get much coverage when it came out, as it released during Starfield's hype cycle, but it had been on my radar ever since I saw the trailer, and I jumped on it the day it was released. It's called Under the Waves. It's an underwater exploration game with some heavy issues that your character is attempting to work through. If I was being reductive, I would say it's Lost meets Bioshock. It's both relaxing and panic-inducing all at the same time. It has a rad synth soundtrack and you make friends with the seal. If you can deal with its really heavy themes, it's a very rewarding experience and you should really give it a try. I would love more of this universe. It's almost a shame that your character's journey overshadows everything else that's going on here because there's almost two or three games worth of plot happening in the background while you sort through your personal issues. The game had some graphical problems at launch, but those have since been patched, and so if you can handle its emotional themes, now's a great time to explore under the waves. And my favorite game of 2023 is a controversial pick, not because it's actually controversial, but because the internet is a bunch of weirdos. My favorite game this year was Starfield. And it was Starfield because it was the only game this year that consumed me. I played huge chunks of this game night after night after night. Usually I'm bouncing back and forth between several games, an hour or so at a time, but when Starfield came out, it was all I wanted to play, non-stop. In the end, I put well over 100 hours into Starfield, and the day the expansion comes out, I will dive right back into it. Don't get me wrong, I hear your complaints. I even agree with some of them. It's a buggy game, yes. I had several quests I couldn't finish and still can't after multiple patches because the character I need to talk to has wandered off into the sea. It's absolutely not perfect in a technical sense, not at all. You should also understand that while I dabbled in both Skyrim and Fallout over the years, I never played a lot of either of them, so the notion that this game and its engine are too similar to all of Bethesda's other games doesn't concern me because it's not something I've been overexposed to. So yes, I recognize that you, player of thousands of hours of Skyrim over the last 10 years, is disappointed that the engine feels the same. I don't have that experience. My experience is much like my time with Star Trek Resurgence. I love being in this world and helping shape it based on my way of thinking. Solving weird little disputes, finding some random five hour side quest that goes off in bonkers directions, meeting up with Space Grandma for some space meatloaf, picking up something that fell on the floor, immediately getting arrested for it, and being drafted into an undercover cop quest line. This game goes in so many interesting directions and all of it is speaking my language. I want more of this. I loved Starfield. So yeah, clearly there were games I did not get to. I didn't have a chance to fire up Alan Wake 2 yet, and that was my most anticipated game of the year. Usually I end up with a racing game in my favorites, but I didn't spend enough time with LEGO 2K Drive, The Crew Motorfest, or Hot Wheels Unleashed 2 to really get a good idea about any of them yet. All the single player story games just consumed me. So I don't know what all is in store for gaming in 2024 yet, but I'd wager you're going to see a few 2023 releases in my honorable mentions next year. If I go by the same rules, though, who knows? I'm really curious about your top five games of the year. Post them down in the comments so I can take a look. And thanks for hanging out with me, not just in this video, but all year long. 
Your interest in my silly little videos and live streams here has made me want to keep making more, and I think 2024 will have a lot of fun stuff. So have a wonderful New Year's, everyone. I'll be back shortly with more stuff, and until then, let's play some games.